Time. He does this every day, man. Why, why are you embedding him? <laughs> I, so bad, I don't know, bro. bro. Man. Welcome everybody to the Onward of VR Master League Season 12, Week 10. My name is Nightfire with two E's. Today I will be your sole conductor in another high tier adventure into the land of Onward. Rome versus the Vanquires. Vanquetes? Vanquetes, I think. Uh, I believe if I'm pronouncing things right. It is, uh... Oh, it's French. Anyway, a high-tier battle <laughs> coming in from both of these teams. I think Quetus have been around since Season 11. Rome, uh, obviously... Uh, well, not, maybe not obviously. They've been around in the league since Season 6. Uh, has, has a good depth of experience, albeit they've seen changes in their roster throughout the course of those seasons, and especially... Uh, between seasons 11 and 12 uh, they are still playing well they have a very fast-paced play style that works well for them uh, the Vanquetes are definitely going to be tested here today for those that are tuning in and maybe not familiar with the regular format here we have a best of three map uh, series to play out the map pool consists of custom maps and uh, maps from the game itself so we like to take, you know, we, we have a map pool that is voted on 
uh, by the moderators and then and the community and then we play it out throughout the course of the season and i think we are still in the old map well the middle map pool rotation i don't think the map pool has changed yet i think that happens next week but teams have to ban a, a map the home team is rome they ban downfall the away team is the vanquetus they ban a, a, a hook that means both of those maps cannot be selected uh, leaves us with a relatively close quarters uh, battle ahead of us as most of the maps that are remaining are close quarters maps our first map of the day is going to be arctic to kick things off and this is rome's choice so we can most certainly anticipate uh, a heavy dose of aggression uh, you know we saw arctic get played out last night down on the map three decider a round seven between two teams that are just as high in the regular season ladder as these two if you look at both rome and vanquetes in the worldwide standings rome is eighth and the vanquetes are fourth uh, and so we are still you know uh looking at even though we just had a a top 10 matchup yesterday we got another one here today and it's going to be, I would anticipate, a pretty wild back and forth. The Vanquetis, we haven't talked much about them since they are new into Season 11, but they have gone almost undefeated this season. They have only lost their first game against Animal House. Since then, they have not okay. lost a match. They have not been cast, oh, and it is their here. first ah, go Season 12 ah. matchup on stream. So we can see what this team that is ranked fourth worldwide is really made of as we dive into the action. Not going to be an easy round for Rome. Not going to be an easy round for the Vanquetes. We are right away into some firefighting here as Chawe trying to get some shots downrange. But Gladiator is pushing up and we already have a kill on the side. Veil vale goes down as Gladiator flies the corner. Nobody's here on objective. Everyone's pushed past. Hubs is the last one alive, and Gladiator punches in the code in a matter of seconds. Arctic, one of the crazier maps to tune into, and well, there's why. A wild push into cap for Rome to kick this off on their map pick and go up 2-0, the perfect start for the home team. And a small gap in coverage there, a small lapse in communication. And CJ's there, able to peek the corner, but doesn't commit to it as Rome, or excuse me, the Vanquetis really get over aggressive on their defensive push there. I mean, this objective is crazy. So I'm curious how Rome is going to defend it as we go right back into round number two. But that was a really nicely executed push up there coming in from Rome. And now they're going onto the defense, potentially able to push themselves up 3 0 here in round two. Look at how fast those fingers are. Tighten up, tighten up. We're going to have an equally fast push but it is heavily favored onto this side. That's a good flash out and over. Catches most wanted out. I believe stalls hubs. A trade up through the center. Gladiator flies the corner. A trade there. We're into a 3v3. Actually make it a 4v2 as the Reds comes in. They have full control of center. Meso has to be able to crash back here as Re is really the only one watching on, on the objective and you do see Meso rotate back in. Utility comes in, Vale's trying to catch someone out here. He is able to find Hub, but the smoke actually paying uh, paying off and working for them. Okay, so tries to swing and get rid of this up the center, but cannot, and now Re has to push out. They go down on the outside, and Vanquetes come flying in with a very nice Marsoc push, albeit not a cap, but still, they do take their Marsoc round. And this is really what Arctic is. Mostly Marsoc wins. 
It's just... These objectives are, are very hard to defend against aggression that can come at you from every angle right at the same time within the first 30 seconds. It's the nature of Arctic uh, and just how it's built is that it's such a, a very fast map, but it is also tactical. The way that these teams push out, they are minimizing lines of sight right up until that last moment where they are trying to swing corners or look for picks down lanes and... I think players have to be careful here. Rome can work their way over to the east side of this objective and push in, wrap around from that far northeast and actually cap around the cargo crate behind the car, behind the van. And so we could be done with map one here in a second if Rome decide to push up here and try and push in for that cap. Taking a look at the KDs there, you can get an idea of what we're working with so far. Gladiator with that cap and two kills, certainly on a good game right now. Back into the action we go, though, and quit us in for the defensive round for round number three. We change objectives every two rounds, swap sides every other round, well, every round, and uh, that's the nature of Onward. Let's see how most wanted CJ Hubs push up here as Hubs that's up for an early well actually kind of a late angle if they're going to be pushing out on this cross they are committing in to your either in, inside or out over into that corner so a bit of a risky one defensive setup there. Shinobi actually able to kick it off for Vanquetis as they find one up through the center and Vanquetis are not able to set up nicely I like the defensive play here. You look at the overhead, get a little quick opportunity as Rome try and throw a little bit of a uh, different paced attack at the Vanquetes here. Three stacked up out in front of objective. Two in that back south side. The trouble is that they lose the two in the south and southeast. Like I said, that northeast cap behind the van could come through. So it'll have to... Uh, really uh, up through this they really need to coordinate their south entry pushing in from past cj hubs is going to be a challenge oh wow your body comes f absolutely flying in through that doorway completely catches them off guard sound is hard to hear on this map in particular because of the wind the ambient wind sound makes it difficult to hear that's a good flash onto your body they are completely blind Veil could easily pop up here, but they're not going to, and that's going to actually cost them their life. Nobody does actually get the trade. Veil stays stealthed and does find that kill. Varex able to get rid of one in the south. They're still pushing in. Veil goes down on objective, and Shinobi has to crash back. Looking at a potential cap opportunity here as Meso comes flying in. How quick can they enter in the code as Shinobi tries to round the corner? Meso, that is a fast cap. And that is a fast map number one finished. The Vanquetes don't even have time to strategize or really get into a rhythm as Rome fling aggression at them relentlessly. And a 4-1-W comes their way. A, uh... Tough start for the Vanquetes, but we go on to their map pick, which is going to be bizarre. The Van... the Van... Every time I spell it, I wonder. <laughs> Maybe chat can give me a phonetic. Uh, a help out there as I do have you up here. I do want to shout out everyone that is tuning in here. Appreciate everybody dropping in as I do see quite a few faces here. By Chaotic, Drew, Cheddar, Tempest, Captain Soda, uh, Graham, MKSN. Sniper or something. You're knitting these names. Tempest. 
Wiki, uh, Wicka Wicka, we really do appreciate you all stopping in and hanging out. If you are new, hit that follow button as we do do these broadcasts regularly. Throughout the course of the regular season, we still have another five weeks left of regular season gameplay and then another few weeks of postseason action. And so you're not going to want to miss the, especially the postseason, but the back half of this regular season going to be very interesting as these top teams really start to contend and battle for that top eight position. The reason is that the top eight, top seven teams move on to our, technically the top eight best teams in the ladder move on to our uh, postseason tournament where they compete for a chance at our now 7,000 plus cash and hardware prize pool. Um, $7,000 in cash and hardware. That's, that's how I, <laughs> the prize pool that we're hoping to grow as we can continue to look for more sponsors throughout the course of this season but definitely a uh, a bit on the line here for these teams as they do want to win go up in rank go up into that ladder so that they can secure themselves a comfortable spot in the top eight and right now rome are ranked eight the vanquetes are ahead of them ranked fourth in the overall ladder and so if rome can take another map here as we go into map two on bazaar there may be, I mean, this could be a big uh, uh, win here for them. They've already managed to take 4-1 on map one, and I'm sure the Vanquetes are very concerned about having a tough start like okay, that. We do go we again to the Vanquetes map pick as it is their, uh, their map choice as they are the away team. They choose second map, Rome pick third. And so we could see a reversal in scoreline, but what a great start for Rome to come out the gate, double caps on their offensive rotations. They know I'm in here. They know I'm in here. They'll try to take some shots there, but can't quite connect onto the corner. Take a look at the Oregios and Idea. Behind, oh, behind never mind. <laughs> we have to wait a round or two until that map fixes itself. But everyone is over here in the south. We don't need to look at the overhead. Uh, except for maybe to find CJ Hubs going down. As the south push comes in. Really favoring this lane. No one working their way up through Mini Bazaar. Meso not going to be challenged for a good while. If anything, they will have the back... Uh, of a potential attacker if once they spring up, but Meso is really waiting for anyone to come pushing up through the middle. Bizarre. Xiaowei is potentially rotating up over into this side, so maybe their position will pay off. But a good heavy. I mean, you know, I, well, it's the setup phase. Smoke so we'll south. have to see what the Vanquetes are planning. Smoke is coming into the south, and I think that's. A key element, obviously, in setting up this push out. That's okay. also an important kill. Shall we? Finding that blue room down really opens up this crossing. It forces Gladiator to have to peek out and check down the street. And they lose a little bit more defense inside this mini bazaar. Now they likely know that, yeah, they definitely know that Gladiator's here is uh, very nearly caught Gladiator out on that cross. From the, uh, bazaar, West Bazaar. Smokes on OBJ. And they don't have a great coverage onto the objective. Gladiator is nearly that... going down to no. shots from Vale. No, no they the cannot connect onto Gladiator what? there inside. <laughs> Meanwhile, inside the mini bazaar, most wanted nugget pushes in. Meso finds the kill as they do finally peek out. Chowie's there up on top, but no, Meso connects no, 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 there no, 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 as well, and Rome turn the tides on this on this offensive push, a 4v2 now. Everybody's setting up for what is a offensive push in from the south, but Valeo is able to tag one and start three, their charge three in. Two, I believe. Little shot coming in there from Re over towards Vale as they are trying to defend in from that entry. Where is... Got a Shinobi here. They need the support up over the top, and they do have it there. Valor's going to try and peek the corner. They go down. Shinobi catches Gladiator out from behind Red Truck, and we're into a 1v2 scenario. Your body taking a risky peek there, has to rotate back in, tucks into a little bit of cover as Re 
gets aggressive. And if Rome forget that there's only two left, they could end up kind of throwing this one away. And the Vanquetes could bounce back. 1v2, not exactly impossible for God of Shinobi. Bit of a holding pattern here is Shinobi kind of assesses their surroundings. They really don't have any knowledge or information on where this defense is, other than the dead bodies on the floor and any previously agreed upon kill count that they had with the team. But I do like the swing from <coughs> that south side into this mini bazaar. They just checked their watch to notify themselves of how much time is left on the clock for them to push up with. They only have a minute left in this round. So they are going to have to make their push, but they are going for that full rotation to the other side. And maybe Irvati is on to this. As you do see them kind of rotate back around and check the opposite end. Too much time has gone where they haven't seen anything in the south. And they do check right as Shinobi tries to push out. Irvati flies the corner and finds the kill. Rome are now five points unanswered as they go up 1-0 here on map number two. But a much better attempt, at least, from the Vanquettes there. They're like bringing it down into that 1v1, or 1v2, excuse me, and almost able to put up a solid Marsoc start, but this is a tough round. You know, unlike Arctic, Bazaar definitely has objectives that are easier to defend. Uh, in this case, I definitely think this is an objective I rarely see get capped. There are plenty of opportunities for it to be capped. There's all kinds of angles and corners and different spots to cap in, but at this level, the teams are very familiar with all of those positions. And it is a challenge to really kind of sneak through a defensive lineup in the top 10 and gets your cap in. Granted, we've seen it happen already this series and, you know, uh, I think already this week, so, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Onward would be crazy. <laughs> How about that? As we go into round number two, let's see what we get with the Vanquetes defending Rome on the attack. No, they'll get caught off guard. No, they'll get caught off guard if I actually do it. Oh, it's this one. Bit of a late setup there from Shinobi, but everybody is now in position on that defensive side. Meanwhile, taking a look at the overhead, we now have a, an idea of where this team is moving, and really, we just have to watch up top here as doesn't seem like the Vanquires are taking any early peaking angles. We may see a fight here in the north with Vale. North. Yep, they do ID that north cross out. I don't think they take any shots onto Gladiator, though. Gladiator isn't going to commit to pushing in from that north side. But I think it's going to come down. I don't know. I do think Gladiator it does have to peek out here. For at least the play to come through. Gladiator needs to come in from the north right now. And be the distraction. Re needs to be... Well, I guess it's, it's, it's all up on the timing. Comes across. Keeping attention here, but over to your body as they work their way inside. Very close, shall we? Lucky there's not a C4 placement anywhere inside there. corner and down they go shall we find one and a quick duck shot to catch double another a great Dude, double yeah. from chowie that is chowie doing squats to get those kills right there i love to see it something i've i don't think even seen i awesome uh, you very rarely see that level of 
physicality. Obviously, crouching and standing up is a common flavor, but to be doing that in the fight, really impressive. Where are you going to fly this corner? Catch one out in that chaos. They try and find the refrag in that suppressive fire, and I think they do actually get that kill. Chowie is able to rotate in from this backside and find the red res onto hubs, and it is all up to Varys alone. And a 1v5 once no, really this res comes through. Stop. Absolutely trapped in this corner. The smoke's come out. Can't see him in first person, but there they are, denying vision. I wonder if the Vanquettas have an accurate kill count right now. But either way, Varric seemingly... Resetting for their effort into a 1v5. They may not know it's a 1v5, but they also probably don't have any uh, confirmed kills coming through. So, what is the play? I think what they're going to do is... I will do this for you, fire boy. Rotate all the way over to the east, cross the north street, and try and push in from the north side. But they still do have... Over here, to Vale, who is still watching this north. They've been patiently holding their line. And... Barracks could very well walk right into this. This entire rotation... Become absolutely worthless as they make their way up to that corner and try and cross the street, if... They try and cross the street. Otherwise, I'm not sure why they pushed back so deep. The shorter cross. Much more risky, because they could have rotated and actually had some wall on the north for protection. Either way. Varric's going to work up through the Kayat, through the middle, a minute 20 left. We try and utilize these stairs quick to catch out Hubs, who is rotating around. But yeah, they did hear Varus, and now Varus, if they try and cross... Ooh, I actually like this one. Maybe if they hug this wall, they could go past... Or at least go undetected all the way up onto the corner there from Vale. This dumpster denying the vision. The pallet's also blocking vision. So maybe the short swing, but Varys has to, is going to have to know that Vale's in that corner. Jowie also has an opportunity here to find the kill, and oh, Varys is actually going to push in through the alleyway. And Chowie sees that as... No, they don't. I thought they peeked that window looking, but they were actually looking the opposite direction. 20 seconds left, time picks down, Chowie pops up to find the kill, Vanquetes with five alive. Put up their defensive round. A very solid performance to tie things up, one that they absolutely needed, and maybe... You know, we're seeing Vanquetti start to get a little bit warmed up. I feel like Rome almost surprised them on Arctic. You know, it just seemed like they weren't ready for Rome to be as aggressive as they were to go for the double cap like that. And, I mean, there was just a very solid defensive hold. They found the picks. They shut down any sort of planned play there from Rome. Uh, made it very difficult to reorganize, and suddenly they were down to one. Uh, versus five with no kill. I mean, just a great, solid defensive hold. Very disciplined, uh, staying true to their angles. And uh, that's what it takes to really put up a good, solid defensive round and onward. You have to trust your team and stay uh, held on those angles. And I say that knowing that I've watched players stay tight on their angles and lose rounds because they haven't rotated. It's... It, the, the game, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to adapt to the scenario. That's one thing I really love about Onward. And 
These teams are going to have to adapt to Kaya as we go into round number three for map two here. Rome with an early lead 4-1 on Arctic. They now are tied here on map number two. See my dad disappear, but then uh, yeah. watch out. And sets up pretty standard. The Vanquettes have that southeast spawn. They're gonna favor the east side. Okay, je couvre le derrière. Your body has an interesting line here, trying to watch over the wall into the back side there to see if anybody crosses deep east to try to get over to the north wall. And Kayat's a tough objective to defend. You know, I say the, uh, like Arctic there, it almost favors Marsuk for every objective. There are a few here that really do favor Volk, but Kayat is not one of them. It definitely favors the Marsuk. Nice Chow able to find Ree. Nice. Kicks things off, opens up the bazaar just a bit. Irvati's still here, and so if they get overconfident, there could be a few free kills for Irvati in the dark corner. Classic onward timing. Shall we able to pass Irvati's line of sight right as Irvati dips down just enough to lose it? I mean, oh, Shinobi does peek right as Irvati peeks, though, and that position given away. Irvati's going to rotate off, drop down, almost get team killed, and set up inside the bottom floor now. Wait for Shinobi to try and repeat this. Do have a bit of fighting up over on that north side. Gladiator tries to push out. Both Chowley and Belu find those kills. Most wanted able to get Irvati down as they try and swing back. Rome are suddenly chopped down to just two. Meso and Varys. Meso is very far away from objective. If Varys goes down, Meso is going to have to full sprint towards that OBJ. And so I think there's some recognition that they are too far away. They try and crash back. Down they go. Five alive on offense here as Varric circles around an objective that has smokes deployed on it. So many potential threat points here. And it's going to come down to if the Vanquirers are going to try and get the cap, or if they're just looking for this point to take the 2-1 lead. Kayot again, an incredibly hard objective to defend, and there's plenty of cap points here that the Vanquirers could work into. tries to push out they really extend out into the open there most wanted takes the kill and one point goes into the hands of the vanquetes now the trouble is as well that is a successful job and the vanquetes are for the first time taking the lead in this uh series or at least uh, on this map and it could have been a cap they could have potentially locked in two points they could have been looking at a 3-1 right now and I think that Rome are going to be looking for a cap opportunity because they don't have that additional pressure of if they lose they lose the map even then if they lose the map we still have map three to play out which is where which is their map pick and so I am well curious to say the least to see where this matchup leads, but the Vanquettes have certainly woken up a bit. And the last few defensive rounds they put up have been, well, the last defensive round was good. And so, let's see what we get. As we swap sides, Rome go on to the attack. Vanquettes on to the defense. Round number four. 
Standard setups coming in here. Oh, shall we able to fly out and get aggressive catches? One continues to push up though, and as they come in, re able to find that refrag. Putting a few rounds into a typical defensive corner. Not necessarily even really knowing if anybody was there. Just making sure. They do get across that line, and now they have control of this two-story, which does put most wanted at a bit of danger. We can peek up, check that corner. Most wanted is tucked in, so they are actually safe. Other than from a nade, they're well tossed into this back back corner. Oh, but Nugget getting a little aggressive there could cost their life if they're not careful. Rome, very close to this objective, though, and Re is able to do a lot of diversion tactics around the objective space. The suppressive fire, the smokes, really drawing a lot of audio attention onto the objective side. And meanwhile, the rest of this team not necessarily pushing up off of it, maybe a bit sync but re is definitely here before the rest of the team can really do anything off of this suppression and prodding oh, most wanted away. overextends on that back north side re is able to fly up and find the kill I wonder if cj is going to consider challenging next onto this corner just not worth it to allow them to come to you rx gladiator Gladiator in particular trying to prone their way up through the center. And I wonder if there is a route here past Vale through this middle here to get to that objective. I think Vale has eyes over the wall and can check as long as they are on that elevated stair position. As they're ground floor, they're not going to see Gladiator prone here. Oh, as Hubs goes down, Gladiator stands up and sprints. Vale doesn't see Gladiator crossing. Gladiator comes tablet out, but doesn't tuck in. Shinobi drops down from the second floor. Gladiator is there on objective, able to call out at least a little bit of information. But we are into a 2v2. But then Quedis are looking at an opportunity to bump this up 3-1. If they can put off a solid defensive hold here. Vale is suppressed heavily, though. They're going to have a tough time out of that stairwell. He's pre-firing me. If you can knock him, that would be awesome. Not where they wanted it. Looking for a little more distance on that flash. I checked the front, checked the back. Barks on a long rotation here. If Varys can time the distraction properly, there is an opportunity for that front of the objective to be capped from. Rome, we've seen punch in the code very quickly. You cannot leave that objective open. For more than three seconds. And he definitely knows right where Vale is here, as they do have the LMG to suppress them inside of this stairwell. There is a chance for them to rotate over to the north, but Shinobi is on that second floor looking out onto the north side. A minute 15. These two are going to have to sync up on their efforts, though. One minute 15. If 
Varks really needs to connect with this kill. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for Rhee to work forward. At the very least, Rhee needs to time their push up here. Thirty seconds. There's the kill. A big one on the bottom floor. Re can now push off. Shinobi has to watch the basement, and so they come popping in from that second story. There's the kill. Rome not able to get in for that cap, but they do take the round. You can see or hear Re happy with that cap or with the point. Not even getting the cap. They're still pleased, so. Tying things up to a piece, taking us to a new OBJ in the South Humvee. Rome go on to the defense. The Vanquetis a chance to attack an opportunity if they can get a cap here to take map number two away from Rome. But Rome are keeping this thing close. They are not letting a lead get away from them. Could be on track for seven rounds on, on map number two here if things keep going this way so we'll have to see if we get back into it a very quick between round timer round number five kick it off well these have been like the three hardest objectives it's fine it's fine we got we got it they might capture bazaar though they might wait Yo, watch out, you're peeking a lot, dude. Okay, on s'en va par où, man? Par en arrière? Waiting to see what this attack is looking like, but with a quick spawn here from the Vanquetis, they are able to push up. And right now, there is the oh, position certainly given away. Windows, windows, windows. The thing is that Hubs has managed to cross the street, and I don't know if they're aware of this. It does kind of limit how comfortable Rome can get, because uh, CJ could there's, there's two. There's two. peek Varix down this window and have a kill if Varix isn't careful. Here, Vadi on that corner as well. But Hubs really won't be able to push up until they get rid of at least one or two there. I think CJ is going to be safe here. A quick crossover. Gladiator does catch that out, and now Hub's able to get up onto the second floor. Instantly catches out Gladiator deep, but Irvati is still here. They're going to be potentially, yes they are, challenging up the stairs, but CJ says no thank you. Only one person allowed in this apartment. They find that kill. Meso comes flying in to try and reinforce on objective defense as it is crumbling. And it's now all up to Varks and Reed to hold this objective. If they lose... On a cap. Oh my goodness. CJ drops in behind them. Their POV not able to detect that. Varix is here in the corner. And they are able to find one. CJ has tablet out. They try and go for the cap. They're denied. Rome, I wouldn't say getting greedy, but certainly looking for the cap opportunity. Once they can't find it, they decide to just lock in the round before things get out of hand. And they go up three to two. What a series <laughs> this has been so far. Map one. Uh, oh, I got the score wrong there. Uh, 
the pacing just, I think, surprised the Vanquettes. I don't think they were ready for things to be that quick. Jeez, I like those. And, uh... They... They didn't look bad on Arctic. They just kind of seemed overwhelmed, and... Maybe that map, not something that they're uh, terribly experienced on, but Rome definitely caught them off guard. Now they've played a couple of good rounds on Bazaar on their map pick, and they have a 3-2 lead. They're looking to go into their defensive round and take this 4-2 to carry us into a map 3 decider. And that's going to be up into the hands of Rome to pick. And I think we're going to be sticking into this close quarters theme. I don't imagine we'll go to some place like Quarantine. Hook is off the table, though. Suburbia is still there, and so we could be headed to Suburbia for map three. Maybe we go to Quarantine, maybe Paradise. I don't really know where Rome will want to head if they can't take him, map two. Yes. But we are. It's really easy go. It's really Rome easy. with a fast spawn. Seems like they are going to consider going for that quick push out across the street. As all four are pushing forward, Gladiator actually loses their tablet. That could become an issue soon. Heavy smoke wall. Going to give away their spawn, but they don't really get any short smokes. And yeah, all the toss is a little bit too far. Can we get some, can we get some pre-fire so I can cross? I don't have any pre-fire. Oh, Meso can cross free here. Barks finds Chawi on that far side pushing out. The Quetis could lose this series if they do not hold on to this defensive round and let a cap come through. And already they're into a 4v5. DJ Hubs finds uh, a big kill on the your body up through there. the middle. Uh, body definitely getting down, aggressive in that center side. A nice pickup that is very important in evening the odds you know, here 4-4. The setup is coming in here from Rome, though. One working in from the south. They've crossed one across the street. They were attempting to set up to go in from the center as well, but that not pan through as your body went down. And it is all a matter of timing for Rome here. All in the setup phase. Who's this? The back south? Ooh, Varx is yeah, identified. Oh, most like, wanted uh, nugget. Like, yeah, southeast. Spots them out there. He's southeast, he thinks. Oh, and a big pickup but on to see uh, from on to Meso. CJ I able to peek out and get pushing, the one that had crossed and was pushing him. forward. Interestingly enough, there's two now in the south. Oh, and here comes the push okay, yeah. the on the objective room. side. Re yeah, right me. here goes up into that two-story. The call-out does come through, so Re is not necessarily safe. But they are up onto the second floor, and they are hunting. South is pushing in. They're trying to support oh. Re over the top. He's a, he's a south wall, south wall. Another coming in up through the uh, center by wall, tank, but they're a little bit lagging. They need to push in with the rest of the team to crash up. CJ Hubs. Yo, upstairs, upstairs. Still waiting for Re. Re doing a great job of distracting this defense. Interesting enough, CJ pushing off have actually saved their life because they would have been tagged by Gladiator, who is hunting for hubs right I'm now. Alive, yeah, but they all know where I am. Yes, behind objective building. And here comes the other two. Need to reinforce Re, as Re has really drawn the attention of this defense heavily. Here comes the smokes onto objective and hubs, making sure nothing 
Unsavory is coming out. No caps or gladiator pushing in. Albeit gladiator could push in from the center here. Goddess Shinobi is watching objective. Banquetes have a good coverage on this objective. A good peek there from Hubs to catch one. Re still not pushing out from that two story, so they haven't reinforced and Varix sort of left alone now in their south efforts with two minutes left. We're into a 2v4, making a 2v3. That's one dead. One's on objective building. Wow, Re finds Veil through the two story. Shinobi trying to battle Re in these doorways, in these three quarter coverage that Re has, really. Oh, and Shinobi does push up. There's one across from me. They both know where I am. They're pushing me, I think. This corner is so risky to set up in. Re can drop shot Shinobi. One minute left, though, and Re is going to have to push up. Shinobi reinforcing... Over with hubs. They call out, they call you out the and I don't know if they're going to be ready for Vars to come in from the south. Rome trying to work something out here. Vars crosses the street. They go undetected. 35 seconds left. Is Re going to come down or are they going to get stuck there with hubs and God of Shinobi? 25 seconds left. Varix now making their way up. A C4 is out. Oh, Shinobi had planted one there. Able to catch out Re. Now they can focus their attention onto objective Varix into a 1v2 scenario. All they have to do is fly the corner on the south. There's one kill. Ups needs to tuck in, but Varix doesn't apply the pressure and the time ticks away. Banquetes. Take map number two and push this in to a map three series decider. See if we can get rid of that blemish. Map two, though, in the books. Where do we go from here? Map number three, like I said, Rome's decision. We stay close quarters. Was Bizarre a little bit too long range? Did it throw a little wrench in Rome's aggressive play style a little too much? I think Anchor is in this rotation, but I haven't seen it played in a while, so I almost I want to say it's not, but maybe nobody has just picked it. Otherwise, like I said, Suburbia, Quarantine, Paradise, those maps on the table here. Downfall and Hook, obviously banned. Hook would have been the other close quarters map I would think we would go to. So, probably a pretty good ban to come in from the uh, Vanquetis there to get rid of the potential close quarters. And I'm right. Tanker is in the map pool. And it is where we're going for map number three. You know, it, this map got a lot of playtime last season for a good chunk of time. A lot of teams would pink into Tanker. It would be something pretty commonly seen in a series, but obviously with the rotating map pool and Tanker only being in this middle uh, rotation, this middle portion of the map pool rotation, it really, I, I have seen very few, I've cast very few matches on Tanker. There are a few things that have changed since last season, uh, since it was last played um, in the VRML and I wonder if maybe 
Rome is trying to kind of throw the Vanquetes off here with another, I wouldn't say unknown pick because at this level, these teams, they have the experience on all of the maps. But maybe trying to utilize the some of the fresher elements to their advantage. I, I try to remember if Rome have played. Let's just look at the stats. Anchor Rome is one and one. Five rounds played. Uh, one. When do they play it? That is the question. It could have been a while. It was in December. They went up against Raptors, played Tanker, and their map number four, but they'd already won the series. So, I don't know how much you can really trust that statistic. Let's look at season 12, or excuse me, season 11 history. And yeah, I don't think it was in. Oh, I'm wrong. I said, I said I apologize. I said Tanker was in season 11, but I don't think it was. Maybe I'm thinking season 10. I don't know. I've done. I've done. It's like big blur. <laughs> anyway, it's here, and it's what we're watching for our map three decider. Rome versus the Vanquetas. As Rome go on the attack, the Vanquetas go on to the defense. It all comes down to these final potential seven rounds to be played. We are obviously seeing a bit of a brighter map than the rest of the uh, folks in game, simply for your spectating pleasure. This is otherwise what the players are seeing completely limited visuals, but that doesn't deter Gladiator from scooping up a fast double. Start blinding you all there. It's CJ Hubs, the rest of this defense up top. Gladiator working in from the basement, going to try and hit the flank. I got the two guys. But the Vanquetes are quickly down to three, and this is where this aggression might really work for Rome. They just seem to be able to overwhelm the Vanquetes pretty well when they go on to the attack. Good swing from God of Shinobi, though. One's basement, one's basement. Well, CJ Hubs up here, spotting a couple out in front of them. Not able to tag Varix. Tries to drop back down, but Jason flies in. Gets the kill. Leaves just two on objective. Vale and Shinobi. Comes peeking out. There's a quick trade between those two. But Vale flies out and gets a quick double. A big kill that evens the odds. Re, the only Rome attacker left. Oh, and they query spots it out. No, they cannot win. Vale does not connect. And Re clutching in map num round number one on map three for Rome. Just barely able to squeak ahead. That that prone position from Vale really paying off. Shinobi with a good call out as Vale finds a great double transferring off of the information that Shinobi had told them to get that second kill. Uh, very nicely done, but ultimately not quite enough. As Re does finally find a kill in that round and pretty dang important one. While I have some quick time here, we did mention there's a prize pool. That comes in from our sponsors. Those sponsors are VRML, contributing into the prize pool. VRWare, contributing to that awesome VRML merch. Arma as well, if you want to get a jersey like... Oh, I'm not wearing an Arma jersey. Like the one I'll be wearing tomorrow <laughs> on tomorrow's broadcast. Uh, you can indeed with using the code VRML. VR cover provides provides great comfortable covers, uh, face masks for face coverings for all, any VR headset. 
Pro 2 VR, uh, offering fantastic st uh, mounts for your controllers that you will stabilize your aim, provide a stock that connects to your shoulder that you can fit. Uh, they have all kinds of different varying mounts, varying prices. Some have haptic feedback, some have magnetic cuffs on the bottom. Uh, highly recommend you check that out if you want to improve your aim in game. HyperX, obviously, with a fantastic mic like the HyperX Quadcast S and the Cloud 2s and Asterion. Uh, they have a fantastic uh, LED uh, stands for your favorite VR headset. Uh, plugs into your computer and has a uh, charging port built in. So nice, uh, a pretty nice device. I really like my my uh, Asterion stand that I have my Quest 2 on right now. Anyway, those are the sponsors. Be sure to check them out. Show them some love, please. One card out. I don't know if we have a link for VR cover in Twitch chat yet, but we will soon enough, and we wanted you folks to use that if you ever do go over and pick up anything from the VR cover site. They're pushing right side. One's in the building on the right side. Tom's getting picked up there from the Rome radio as the Vanquettes decide to push in up through the center. Counter flash up and over. Doesn't connect. Your body is able to work up a little bit into this corner, but look at the aggression. Rome dropping quickly. Jason almost going down off the rotation. Varex completely getting caught out. The tablet almost comes in. Jason not expecting Nugget to be there, but they trade on objective. Everybody else battles it out in the center, and the Vanquetes come out on top with a Marsoc round of their own. Almost a cap as they did push up around that objective space. And in a second or two, actually a minute and 15, uh, we are all tied up here to a piece. We go now over to the east side. Well, I guess what is the, uh, oh man, I need my Nautilus. I need my, I need my Nautilus terms, uh, port and stern. No, those are the same things. Aren't they? Bow and stern? Anyway, the front of the ship. The front, I mean, right, the front and the back. The front of the ship uh, we head to for our next OBJ. So far, staying up top, not delving down into the depths of Tanker just yet. And I feel like the upstairs objectives really do lend themselves a little bit more into the favor of Marsoc. I don't know if it's because it's a bit more darker up top. It requires, well, it doesn't require, but encourages an investment in the night vision, which does require a point uh, out of your kit. So that does affect what kind of utility you can bring with you. Um, but I feel that Marsoc just have better results. A heavy smoke play up the center, especially on this objective. There's just a lot of different Potential cap angles, little nooks and crannies you can tuck into and cap this objective undetected, so. I'm sure Rome are thinking cap here. And I'm curious to see what the Vanquettes are going to try and do to shut them down. The, the push is most certainly going to come in from Rome. Does that, does that mean we'd have to restart the whole game, or what? No. No, no. <laughs> uh, we just play it out? I, I'm not yeah. sure. We might have to contact guys. Into the action we go and down. Gladiator goes right away as they swing the corner. A trade up through the center, one for one. Just like that, we're down to three. Three Varx and your body are all that make roam. And re. It's not wasting any time. They go underground on the hunt, push up towards objective side, and start to work their way forward. Redetected by Vale. You can hear the footsteps underneath them. And so there's not going to be any surprise exit from the bottom floor. And if anything, Chowie is going to try and go down there and look for the kill.
One's right side moving up. Ooh, Reed is able to find Shawi in the basement. A nice pickup there. Thought I had that angle. But we didn't. How many Reed we certainly have? did, and turns it into a 3v3. CJ is there to reinforce, though. So still not a free exit here for Reed. And CJ certainly hears these footsteps. The trouble is, is it's really forcing an investment of at least one defender and CJ sitting back there. And if there are good smokes onto the objective space, again, that cap potential is there. And Vanquetas do not want to allow that to happen. So they have one or two pretty close. There's a nice swing from Shinobi. Under the gunfire, though, Re comes up the stairs undetected. Shinobi doesn't... Oh, no, they do. They do hear the footsteps now as they turn around looking for where Re could be coming from. Now it's all up to Re. Interesting call out there from Hubs that they're on objective. Yeah, on Hi. The from, uh, and <laughs> Re, not afraid to give away their position as they drop back. Consider resetting as they have a lot of time. Three and a half left on the clock. Want me to go back, Felix? Yeah, yeah. I look one guy in the window. There's a lot of information that can be gained here from this rotation. Re is hearing these comms above them. And now these footsteps as they do try and shift over onto Re's side. He, he's rerouting his post. He knows that he's screwed up. Unless he's really that dumb. Yeah, CJ, can you see inside the container next to me so they're not capping in it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I you're just gonna have to watch back sure. here. You're gonna have to yeah. watch my back over here in this building. Uh, just, I think it's less alive, or else we would have been pushed almost. Yeah, just make sure it doesn't cap and we get, get sneak up. Yes, sir. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. Felix, is that you, Povic? No. You, man. Hi, Felix. Concentration, guys. Velix. I was calling him Vale. Only took two maps to figure it out. Balls. And Re just working their way up the stairs. Shinobi does have a line. And he's pretty stealth. But they go down. Re flies up and able to confirm the kill before CJ can get down the stairs and get down to Re. And oh no, a team kill. Turns it into a 1v1. Perfect outcome for Re here as they are now set up for their push over towards objective. Velix has to defend around objective side and they do. They hold that stairwell and prevent Re from doing any more damage out of it. The Vanquetes go up to one. Their second time taking a lead here. Last time they did it, they managed to take away map number two on Bazaar. Horton Stern. By the way, is what I'm getting in from chat. Thank you very much for the assistance. Uh, we cannot hear team radio when you spectate. It uh, used to be a feature probably like a year and a half ago, but it has been since uh, taken out of the game. And the only way to hear uh, teams is to be in the vicinity of them. So sometimes when we're around teams, you will hear their commute, their comms and the communication. Sometimes we do hear the on the shoulder radio. Uh, from the players. I think that's a bug more often than not. Um, but yeah, we don't want to open up comms completely uh, like that. It would be a little bit too hectic anyway, but I do understand the 
interest in how these teams communicate because communication a big element in any of these teams success especially having quick and snappy comms very important when you're going in for an aggressive play like uh rome does on their rollouts and well it's why you hear the teams communicating so much in the game making sure that everybody knows where they're supposed to defend what they're defending now two and one the banquetas are looking at an opportunity to snag map number two or map number three just like map one went to the way of rome No, no, Fusbo. Sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry, I forgot. Really, I really. Bottom right side, bottom right side. Fuck, Chewy, Mo. Thank you. No, no, that's upstairs. Round number three, four, excuse me. Under what here? down in the basement getting kind of aggressive but everyone on the Venquetes oh, I say I stand corrected most wanted and CJ down in that basement did you get the guy yeah nice they'll find one CJ battling re in the basement oh and re tries to peek out they go down the Vinquetes have confirmed two right now and are set up for an opportunity to push in for a cap. Gladiator getting aggressive, flies and snags one on the back. Can't find Shaoi. Shaoi completely blind as Yervati comes flying onto the corner. Do they play it quick enough? They do. Shaoi goes down in the aggression. Well, works for a moment. It's now Jason doused in smoke. Has to defend this objective alone and CJ is pushing up. Venquetes are taking a 3-1 lead on the map three series decider. They are out aggressing Rome here. And they are potentially flipping the score line 4-1 on map three. It's like they got on them on Arctic there, 4-1 for Rome. So one defensive round away. We do also go into, well, a pretty tough to defend objective. We stay upstairs. I was thinking we go into the basement, but we are still up top on the top floor of Tanker where things get kind of crazy uh, and are typically pretty fast and are now right in the middle of the map. Definitely an opportunity for Rome to tie this 3-3, but I don't know if they risk that with the series on the line. If they lose this round off a of potential gamble for cap, then that's it. And is it worth the risk? Rome certainly are capable of punching in a very fast code. And so the Vanquetas have to be careful. They cannot get overconfident on this defensive round. They really cannot allow a cap because then that is just, well, <laughs> my dream here at the desk. As we do, we would go into a round six uh, finale there, but still. A great series regardless if you have just been tuning in. You have missed some great action. A very good back and forth. Some kind of wild plays coming in from both teams on both Arctic and Bazaar. And, uh, well, Benquetes now looking at a opportunity to take the series from Rome. Like I said, Rome, I think ranked 8th worldwide and Benquetes are 4th. They are almost undefeated. They have only lost one game to Animal House at the start of the series, the uh, start of the season. Otherwise, the Vanquetes have remained undefeated. They have beaten everyone they've gone up against. Error 404, Peacekeepers. Rome in early December, well, when they went up against them, they beat Rome. And so they do not want to put another L on their uh, score line this season. And Rome uh, have an opportunity to do just that. A botched smoke, I think. Maybe an intended one to allow Reed to cross out without getting pre-fired down. I'm not sure. But I think a botched smoke, and here comes Rope. A heavy smoke dispersal up through the center as CJ Hubs finds Gladiator. Your 
Vadi getting aggressive up through the middle. Turn on the lights a little bit for you all to see, but that is not what they are seeing in game. It is a dark landscape. And that's a good flash onto Yervati, completely blinding them. Re is coming up from the stairs, though. They've found one, and now CJ has to drop off of their angle. Oh, no, a team oh, kill as Shinobi fuck? catches them the as they're rotating out. Varex finds a kill on objective, and their on objective defense is gone. Another team kill comes in as Varex finds God of Shinobi. CJ goes down and Rome. Good job, guys. Good job. on to the series in chaos okay. as planned with at least one point. Keep themselves in this and chip away at that lead that the Vanquettes have now. Very nice attack and well-timed entry on that bottom stairs from Reed throws everything off and opens up the opportunity for the top floor of Rome to find the kills that they need and also to throw that team into chaos. I mean, there was two team kills there, one accidental, but another unknown as they put rounds through smoke and ended up team killing one of their own that was inside the smoke defending objective. Rome played that well despite the pressure. To, to try and force chaos in a final round is risky. To dump in those smokes and play aggressive like that has its risks, but they went for it and the play worked out perfectly. They definitely disrupted any sort of focus that the Vanquettes had there going into that round and are now well a little bit closer to tying this thing up we are potentially headed to a round seven if Rome can hold on to this defensive round we then change objectives Vanquettes go on the defense and we get to see where everything relies where all the chips uh go as it is all down to this final map I see the request coming in there for Channel Point Gambling. Yes, it is sometimes hard for me to manage everything when I'm solo, so I do apologize when we don't have it. Uh, so I know teams, players like to do it, um, but I missed it this series. We won't get it this weekend because we're over on twitch.tv slash VR Master League Saturday at 6 p.m. PST. Sunday at 12 p.m. PST. We also do have some games over on OML3 and likely OML2. So make sure you're following all of the Master League action. But we got action right here on this channel. Master League onward underscore VRML. One guy's objective. An early kill for Vanquerez does set their attack up nicely. Smokes are out. Oh, and there's a second yeah, fail up over the top. Really opening up the entry here. The Vanquerez are looking at a potential Marsoc round and Series W. They just now have to make the entry in. Re is in a dangerous position. They have to push up and get their flank out or it's not going to pay off. This offense is pushing in. It's only Gladiator on objective and Re is not here yet. Everybody is suppressing out. Gladiator catches one. Can't get another. CJ's here. Re on the back gets one. CJ's tablet out. Yeah. They punch the code. No, the kill on the backside from Shinobi. And the Vanquetes take map three off of a kill and go up 4-2. The Vanquers? I don't know. We're at the end of the series. Someone tell me how to say this dang name. Maybe I'm getting it right. A fantastic series nonetheless, and this team continues to remain a powerful squad, one that does not want to lose and has only that stain of a loss to their first game to Animal House. Otherwise, they have had a pretty dang flawless season, and we're going to have to keep an eye on this squad a little bit more as we get into the back half of uh, season 12. What a great performance from them and a great game to tune into. Thank you so much for everybody that did stop by and hung out and tuned in to what was a great back and forth. I appreciate everybody that did uh, drop by and hit that follow button. If you do have a Twitch Prime sub or you do want to subscribe to the channel, I would encourage it. That support comes back to the folks that help run the league, folks like myself that help do production, but also uh, a little bit to our mod team and, and uh, 
everybody that puts in a lot of hard work to help the RML operate. So the support is encouraged and really appreciated. Um, other than that, again, make sure you tune in this weekend, Saturday at 6 p.m. PST, Sunday at 12 over on Horizon Venues, but also Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. On Twitch at twitch.tv slash VRMasterLeague. We do have some weekend matchups scheduled, so you're not going to want to miss those. Those will be super fun to tune into. And we're also going to have more games, so make sure you're following everything VRML as we do have new casters coming up and learning the ropes and uh, bringing you more VRML action. That'll be it for us here. Well, for us. For me and myself and I. Uh, on the desk, I guess for us here, us, as in you and me, chat, everybody that was hanging out, again, I do appreciate you, Seb Dark, Drew, Skis, Bees Gaming, Joshua, Martin, Feeble, Crib, Smoke You, Alex, Reaper, Meso, Coddle, Titan, Feeble, Crib, who else do we got, Mix Snoop, I think I already got those, those fine folk that have been tuning in, but everybody that was dropping by, I really do appreciate you. And uh, hope to see you next time. But until then, my name has been Nightfire. Stay classy.